So what if we could dynamically delete items inside of Figma? I mean, that'd be great, but we can't do that, can we? Well, let's have a look and see if we can. So I've got a streaming app design here and we can see I've got a My List feature. So let's kind of just go through that. So you can see I've got some movies in here, Last Samurai, Logan, The Amazing Spider-Man, great movie, Better Roses and Aquaman. Okay, so I've got them all here in my list. And you can see I've got this edit button. So let's click this edit button. And here I'm being presented with the same movies in a vertical list. And you can see here, I've got some delete icons. So let's try this out. Let's delete Logan first. Okay, so Logan has now been removed from this list. Let's close the list. And if we come back to my list, you can see Logan has now disappeared. Okay. Hit edit again. This time we're going to delete um, Aquaman. Aquaman is now gone. And if I come back to my list, it's also gone from my list here. Okay, so we could have done this before in Figma. We, this could be an on-rails prototype. But to prove to you that it's not, I'm going to refresh. I'm going to come back into the My List feature. This time I'm going to delete Better Roses first. Close it down. You can see Better Roses is now gone. And one more time, I'm going to come into the edit mode and we're going to delete the Amazing Spider-Man this time. Close it down. And you can see the Amazing Spider-Man is now gone. So how can we do this in Figma? Well, if you stay tuned, I'm going to show you. Okay, so here we are in the Figma file. So I've got two frames here, which make up my design. So I've got this home frame, which is showing me the home screen. And then I've got my list overlay, which is obviously the overlay, okay? And we can see that we've got this vertical list here with these three icons, and we've got this, effectively, this carousel for my list, okay? So I'm just gonna open up the preview window. So this is obviously new to Figma. We've got, now got this um, live prototyping preview window. And I've already set up the, the frame so that it's scrolling. So we've got the scrolling ability here and we've got some horizontal scrolling here with these different, these different carousels, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to hook up this edit button so that we can bring our overlay up over the top of the screen, okay? So we're gonna come into our design here. We're gonna find our edit button on the My List carousel. And we're gonna make sure we're in prototyping mode so you can switch from design to prototyping mode just over here on the right hand side or you can use the shortcut Shift E that will also toggle you between the two modes. Okay, so we're gonna to go to prototyping mode and I'm gonna add an interaction and I'm gonna leave it as on click and I'm gonna choose open overlay, okay? I'm gonna choose my list overlay. That's the only other frame I've got in my Figma file. And I'm gonna change the animation to move in. So I want it to slide up from the bottom. So I'm gonna choose move in and then Figma gives me four options, left, right, down and up. So I'm gonna choose the up arrow. So I want it to slide in from the bottom. And I'm just gonna change the duration to 200 milliseconds, make it a little bit more speedy. Okay, that's all I need to do in here. And I now need to do the reverse. So I need to make it close and, and animate back out. So I need to come over to my close button here on the My List overlay. So I'm gonna select that. And I'm gonna come over to prototyping mode. I'm gonna hit a plus button. And on click, I'm gonna choose close overlay. Okay. okay, so that's all I need to do to create the open and close. So let's just go back to the first frame here and let's just check that out. So I'm gonna come down to my list. So I'm going to hit the edit button. That's gonna open my list and I can hit the close button to close my list. Okay, so that's the first part done. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so the next part is we're actually going to use a new feature in, well, two new features, I guess, in Figma. One is the new variables feature. And a part of the new variables feature that we're gonna use is the ability to bind those variables to specific parts of the UI in Figma, okay? So to get to the variables panel, we need to deselect everything in our file, so there's no frame selected. And we need to make sure we're in design mode as well, so we need to switch over to design mode. And you can see here we've got this local variables option. So we're just going to click that to open the local variables panel. 
and we're gonna create a new collection and I'm just gonna call this my list. Okay, and inside of this, I'm going to create five variables. So a variable for each of my movies. And the variable I'm gonna create, so the type of variable I'm gonna create is a Boolean variable. So Figma gives you four variable types. Boolean is effectively true and false. So on and off, true and false. And you may be familiar with Booleans in terms of components in Figma previously. So I'm gonna choose Boolean, and we're actually gonna create another four. Okay, I've got my five Boolean variables and I'm just gonna rename them so that they've got the same names or similar names to the movies. So we've got Last Samurai. Logan. Amazing Spider-Man. Bed of, oops. Bed of Roses and Aquaman. Okay, Marvel and DC represented here. And initially, we want all of these Booleans to be set to true, because true means that the layer is going to be visible, false is going to be mean that the layer is going to be invisible. So we want them to be all visible by default. Okay, so we've got our variables set up. That's all we need to do in the variables panel. We can safely close that down. And we're gonna come over to our home screen. And we're going to now use the binding feature to bind those variable values to specific parts of the interface. So we want to get to the my list carousel here. So I'm just gonna select my list. And I can see over here in the layers panel, I've got a carousel so I can kind of see my five thumbnails here. So I'm gonna select the last samurai. And I'm gonna come over into my contextual panel. I'm gonna find the, the layer segment. I'm gonna right click, right click on the visibility icon. And you can see when I right click, I can see all of those variables. So I'm just gonna choose the last samurai variable. And that's effectively now gonna bind the value of the variable to the visibility of the layer, okay? So I'm gonna go through and do that for the other four movies. Okay, so I've bound those five thumbnails in the carousel to the variables. I now need to do it in my list as well. So I need to bind the same. So I actually wanna bind the whole row this time. Okay, so I'm gonna do that in exactly the same way. So let's find our first row. And I'm gonna bind it to the variable and I'm gonna do the same for the others. So I've now bound to the variables my two sets of, of thumbnails, of movie thumbnails. Okay, so the final thing I need to do is to create the delete feature, okay? So I've got these five delete icons, these trash icons. So I just need to create some functionality around these. So let's select the first, the first delete icon. So I'm gonna to go to prototyping mode, so that's Shift E. And I'm gonna to go into my act interactions and on click, I'm going to use another new feature, which is set variable. Okay, so I'm gonna choose set variable. And you can see, I can see it's showing me all of the variables I've got in my file. So I'm gonna choose, obviously I'm on the last samurai movie, I'm gonna choose the last samurai variable. And I'm going to, so it's currently set to true, which means that the layer is, is visible. I wanna set it to false to make it invisible, okay? So I'm just gonna choose false and close that down. And I just need to do that for the other four movies as well. So let's do that.
okay. So I've now bound my five variables to the five icons and I'm effectively using the set variable to change it from true to false. And that's all I need to do. So let's come over to preview mode. I'm just going to select the home screen here, just flow one here to go to the beginning of my prototype and coming over to the preview window here, I'm gonna scroll down to the edit button here on my list, I'm gonna tap it. That's gonna open up my overlay. I'm going to try by deleting Last Samurai first. You can see that's gone from the list and you can also see it's gone from the list here. If I come back into edit and delete say Better Roses, that's also gone from the list and you can see that's also gone from the list here. So it's really as easy as that. So we can now use the power of variables in Figma to create a lot more dynamic prototypes. And as you can imagine, if you can create more dynamic prototypes, you can create more freedom and more believability when people are using your prototypes, when you're using them in testing and things like that. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more Figma videos, then please give this video a like and please like give me, just let me know in the comments if what you think of this video, what other videos you'd like to see around prototyping in the world of Figma. Okay, so that's all from me today and I'll see you next time.